Man. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Y'all, I have been waiting patiently for a long time for this day to come, and it finally came. Joe Biden is forgiving ten to twenty thousand dollars for my student loan debt or your student. And we need to talk about it. I am Joy Bailey. I am the mortgage boss, and today we are talking about student loan debt forgiveness and what does it mean for you and your home loan. So traditionally, student loan debt was forgiven in one of a couple of scenarios, right? One, you died. <laughs> Two, you're permanently disabled. So, it has been a groundswell of support in the last decade or so for student loan debt to be wiped away because it was financially crushing people that wanted to purchase homes and just do all types of things and invest their money. But they were tied down to loans that they got when they were 18, 19, 20 years old. Okay? And it's like this constant joke of you got you went to college to get a job to get a job to pay for going to college like it's this never ending cycle and so it looks like this cycle might be coming to an end for some of us and I think that baby steps is better than no steps so as of right now Joe Biden had forgiven approximately 32 billion dollars of the 1.6 trillion dollars of student loan debt in America. And I want to underscore the fact that we are only talking about people that have federal loans, not any private loans, but only federal loans. And the reason why this is really important is because if you got federal student loans, it implies that your parents or your household was under a certain income. Um, and couldn't afford to either take out private loans to get you to college or didn't have enough money to write the check every semester. So this is only applicable to people that got federal student loans. So as of right now, who is getting this debt forgiveness? Who qualifies? One, you had to have federal student loan debt. And two, if you earn less than $125,000 as a single individual, or if you file your taxes and you're married and the two of you together earn less than $250,000, you could get $10,000 forgiven of your total student loan debt. You may get up to $20,000 of your student loan debt if you were a recipient of a Pell Grant. So if you only went to undergrad, it was an in-state school, you might only owe $10,000, $15,000. And so that's going to make a huge difference in your life. Big, big difference that is going to be wiped away. The thing is, a lot of people do not realize that there has always been a fine print that talked about if you are on an income-based repayment plan, what happens at the end of ten or tw uh, at the end of twenty or twenty-five years? At the end of twenty to twenty-five years of you being on an income-based repayment plan, the debt was always going to be forgiven. Like I guess they probably figured, like Psh, they ain't paid us back by now. I guess we're not going to get the money, right? However, the amount of money that they were going to forgive had been written up based on this guideline to be taxed. And a lot of people didn't know that. A lot of people don't realize that. So what has happened is that Joe Biden's administration said, hey, that don't seem really fair. Let's, if we're going to forgive it, let's be done. Let's, let's forgive it. Let's just move on with life. And so the federal tax code now has a little bit of a patch on it that basically says, if you are getting student loan forgiveness between the years of 2021 in 2025, and your loans are forgiven, you will not be taxed on that at a federal level. Your state, depending upon where you live, may tax you. So you need to look up where you live and if this $10,000 or $20,000 that you are getting forgiven will be taxed in your state. How do you get this loan forgiveness, Joy? Well, you will be 
having your deferment uh, extended or your forbearance extended through December 31st. On December 31st, you'll be able to apply for this loan forgiveness. And then, you know, you'll I guess continue to make payments, I'm assuming, until that loan is actually forgiven. Who knows how long that could take? We're talking about the government. We know that's low. So that's basically what you have to do is a sit and wait game. If you have been a person that said, oh, you know what? I can get ahead on these student loans. Let me keep making my payments. I'm going to pay it down. I'm going to pay it down. I'm going to pay it down. While it's interest free, you are now entitled to a refund. So check out whatever links you need to find, any websites um, for further information to learn more about how you might be able to recover some of those funds that you've been paying over the last two years if you're going to apply for this student loan debt forgiveness. Okay, so how does this apply to you as it pertains to the way that we look at your student loans? And does this mean that you're going to qualify for more? It could and it couldn't. Yes, or, yes and no. So depending on the type of loan that you are applying for, whether it's a conventional loan, with Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, or an FHA loan, which is a government loan, or a VA loan, all of those calculations are a little bit different. As of right now, the way that we have been calculating it is that if you have a $0 payment because you are in forbearance, we will calculate and create a payment just as a cushion in the event that your payments resume and you have to make payments and we don't want you to have overextended yourself in terms of how much house you bought because you weren't making payments on your student loans. So that's why we create this payment. And so the formula for that can be anywhere between a half a percent and one percent of your outstanding balance. So for example, if you owe $50,000 in student loan debt, we will say, again, depending on what type of loan you are applying for, we will create a payment anywhere between $250 a month and $500 in payment every single month as a full payment just to make sure you're not borrowing too much. Um, if you are getting your loans forgiven, a couple of things that you need to keep in mind. In the grand scheme of things, $10,000 is not going to be a lot of money in terms of how we're going to calculate your payment. If you continue to have these forbearances and deferments, um, like a lot of people do, it might change, you know, that calculation by $100. I mean, you know, not a whole, whole lot. So that means that if you had $50,000, and you got $10,000 forgiven, then now you owe $40,000. So instead of us counting $250 to $500, we're counting $200 to $400 as your payment. So it helps with your debt to income ratio, but it isn't necessarily going to put you in a different zip code in terms of the house that you're going to be able to buy. Um, and I think that's really, really, really important to understand. If you have an income-based repayment plan or income-driven repayment or the repay, um, R-E-P-A-Y-E, I forgot what it stands for, but under the umbrella of income-based payments, if they say that your payment, you qualify for a $0 a month payment, we'll take that. We will take that. We will count $0 a month as your payment if that is the payment that you qualify for through your income-based or income-driven repayment plan. That does not work for all loan products. That's only going to be applicable to some loan products. And I won't get into details of that right now. I would say if you would like to talk about it, please give me a call. There's a link so you can book a consultation and we can go over your scenario for how much you might qualify for. Um, 
but your student loans are as of right now on track to either maybe create a scenario where you are student loan debt free or you have a lot a huge chunk taken away that you don't have to think about or like me i owe 150,000 dollars or something like that it ain't gonna help me it ain't i i still owe a bazillion dollars and i'm waiting on these 20 25 years to expire so they can forgive the entire debt. And hopefully by the time my 20 to 25 years expires, I will not be taxed on that. The reality of it is, and this is just my humble opinion, I think that a lot of people are upset because they're like, well, I worked hard and I paid off my loans and it's not fair. Well, I mean, I get it. That's a fair argument. Um, the other thing that people are saying, well, what about the kids that are going through school now, are they going to be able to have $10,000 or $20,000 forgiven? What if we get another administration and they don't believe in that? It's not equitable, isn't fair to everybody. I believe that the equitable solution is this. And I'm speaking as somebody, I went to undergrad at a and I went to grad school at UNC Charlotte. Um, and I took out the max. I took out the absolute maximum because I went to grad school and I wanted to make sure that I borrowed enough to be able to cover my bills, um, pay my, you know, whatever I needed to pay and eat. Um, and they allow you a lot of money every year. I want to say like $20,000, maybe a little bit more every year that you're a full-time student. And I mean, I don't, I can't remember what it was and I don't know what it is now, but you can borrow above and beyond what is needed. So it covers your living expenses while you're in school. So me being me, I was like, oh, sign me up, free bunny. And I should have known better, but I was like kicking the can down the road. I'll worry about it when it's time to worry about it. But what has happened over those years, I think I borrowed maybe 70 or $80,000. It has ballooned into over six figures because of the interest so my personal opinion i think the equitable solution would be let everybody's interest go charge people zero percent interest because paying on 20 or 30 or forty thousand dollars over 25 years and when you get to the end of that 25 years you still owe twenty thousand dollars like that sucks this ridiculous and it shouldn't be like that so if they just flat out forgive all of the interest i'm pretty sure that people will say you know what i did borrow this money and position them to be in a situation where they can make payments and they can pay it down and they can pay it back i don't know that's just my humble opinion so um joe biden if you happen to see me Consider that, please. Thank you. All right. So I just wanted to cover that because I know it's a hot topic. And I was getting that question a lot from some of my borrowers that are currently in the process of purchasing. If you have questions, all my contact information will be below. I'm more than happy to see what I can do to assist you. Thanks for watching. Lastly, please note that this was an example for a single borrower. If you have someone else that will be on the loan with you, that will also be gaining additional buying power because of the reduction in their student loan debt, please apply the math accordingly.